it's peony season here in Pennsylvania, but before we get to peonies today, we're going to talk about leaves because leaves, friends, as far as I'm concerned, are the lifeblood of watercolor joy. So today it's about two different leaves painted with three different brushes. And there might be a little extra surprise coming too, so stick around. Today I'm using the Art for Joy Sake palette, rough arches watercolor paper, and three different brushes around a three quarter inch flat wash brush and a dagger. Start with a clean, damp round brush and load up your favorite green. Use whatever you have. Lay down a wiggly stroke, increasing the pressure as you go to the base. Repeat on the other side, wiggle, wiggle. Grab a second color, I'm using that yellow. And as you apply the second color, kind of push that color out along the silhouette of your first stroke. And with that push of color, you're creating those little points, those little jaggedy edges of a classic rose leaf. I'm grabbing a third color. It's a really dark mixture of green, browns, blues, whatever you might have. And I'm gonna start detailing with that darker color on the other side. Same kind of idea, push that color on. And as you push, you're creating those little points along the edge or the silhouette of this leaf. And really that's it, friends. You can dab in more colors into the middle or the main body of the leaf as you see fit, but it's really about those little points along the silhouette. And the biggest thing to know here is make sure that your leaf the entire time is damp. You don't want anything drying out or you're not gonna get that nice, even soft blend. If your leaf starts to dry out, just add a little bit of clean water and everything will kind of reactivate. And just take advantage of that wet page now and add some color and let them explode into one another. If your explosions feel like too much, dab a little bit of clean water or another color on top or next to, and that will help things blendy blend. Let's try a version of the same leaf again, but with the three quarter inch flat wash brush. This could be interesting. Load up, favorite green again, dab and lift, dab and lift, dab and lift, all in the same direction. Then switch the angle of your brush with a new color loaded and create the same kind of marks on the other side. And now it kind of looks like a pine needle, but trust me, swoosh, and things start to get interesting. I'm holding that wash brush on its side and I'm gonna go ahead and dab to fill in and edit the shape of this leaf. So I'm kind of doing it backwards compared to the first leaf. So I'm basically back filling in between those initial scratchy marks with more color to get the edge that I want, the effect that I want with this rose leaf. Next, load your dagger brush with your favorite green and press, wiggle, drag and lift. Press, wiggle, drag, and lift with a second color on the other side, and you have your basic shape. Now that everything's wet, I'm gonna go in and add some darker green. This is very similar to the first leaf, but what I love about this leaf with the dagger is it just get a little more je ne sais quoi, a little more personality than I did with my round brush. But I'm just going in using that curved edge of my dagger facing downward, dabbing and poking and just overall refining the silhouette of that leaf with the tip of my brush or the side of my brush. Just keeping in mind that the wet page is an opportunity and adding color, pulling color back out as I go and getting that lovely blend. Time for another leaf using three different brushes. Loading up that round brush, you're gonna press lightly, and then more heavily as you drag and curve as you drag and repeat that on the other side. We use a different color if you'd like. And oh my gosh, that's the leaf. Okay, maybe I'm crazy trying it with this three quarter wash. Press, curve, drag, curve a little more and lift. Repeat, new color. I'm starting a little bit further down from the first stroke. Press, drag, curve, wiggle and lift. And you have a gorgeous organic lovely leaf i need more adjectives let's try it with a dagger press curve drag and lift slowly press curve drag and lift slowly there you have it all right friends let me know is this kind of exercise helpful say yes or no and if you have a moment let me know why either way and while you're at it if you like the video in general so far i'd love it if you could give it a boop that's a like now I'm going to speed things up a bit, friends, because this is the part where I'm adding some of my favorite linear details. 
But honestly, there is another video here on this channel that is way better in teaching you how to create these linear details with a liner brush. And so I'm going to link it below. You're going to want to bookmark that, head to it later. But basically, friends, these linear details can transform a simple kind of loosey-goosey watercolor leaf into something pretty spectacular and almost slightly realistic-ish. So, yeah, it's a good thing. Well, that was a Martha Stewart moment, if I ever heard one, but seriously, check the link out below when you have a moment. It's a good one. Yeah, there we go. And you've been patiently waiting. I told you there'd be a surprise, and it's peony season, so I couldn't let this week go by without painting some of these beloved blooms from my garden. The season never lasts long enough. Same supplies for this one, my friends, and I'm going to stick with the round brush, though. Starting with the center, some of that bright fluorescent yellow and a little bit of peach blendy blend together. Going right in with a pink backward C curve. And I'm going to continue curves around and around and a few dashes in a darker purple. Still haven't rinsed that brush, picking up some more of that bright pink and pressing and dragging to the left. And then a big press on the right hand side as I wiggle and curve down the page. And another little U shape and filling in with red. No rinsing, pick up some purple and a little curve underneath the left side. Two curves actually. Now I rinsed and I've got some strong red and I've got a few press, slight drags and lifts. Press, a little bit of drag and lift. And you get that gorgeous teardrop shape. Perfect for side view or three quarter view petals. A few dabs, continue on with what's on my brush. And now I'm going in, picked up some blue again without rinsing. And I'm getting some of that really nice shadow and depth towards the center of the flower and where these petals meet. A little bit of that creamy pink, lots of water on my brush. I did rinse that time around the edges to get things to start to blend and mingle. This painting style doesn't require that you wait for things to dry. There certainly be areas where you feel like, oh, I just dropped in some strokes there and it just feels mushy and gushy and weird. And yeah, you might want to stay away from those areas for another minute or so, but you don't have to let each of these strokes dry. That's for sure. I'm lifting out a little bit of color there to reveal a really soft pink underneath. And because I lifted most of the moisture away, I can go right back on with a little bit of red and intensify that area. Here we go with leaves. Press, drag, and lift right next to one another, similar to the leaves that we did on round two earlier in this video. Going around the silhouette, the outside shape of this flower, and just kind of caressing the outside silhouette with these leaves. And that just helps me control the composition. If I don't have floating elements, I keep everything kind of connected. A few creamy pink dabs here in a ascending size so this almost just looks like a really cool filler flower and then a little bit of green on the tip of my brush with a light stroke upwards in between all those little dabs and then a few green dabs and this could be i mean anything lupin larkspur it could be digitalis or what's that called not yeah yeah digitalis i forget the actual like normal name of that flower but anywho i also love ladies mantle it has this lime green flower to it this time of year with a light green um leafy moments throughout so i'm kind of thinking a little bit of ladies mantle up here in the upper left corner just a lot of dabs dashes wispy light touches with your favorite colors. And friends, if you're curious of the actual semantics and strategy for creating these filler moments in your watercolor paintings, I'm going to link a really important video below. Definitely check it out because I'm kind of speeding through things today because I'm just so excited about this peony. Adding a few more moments of that creamy pink filler flower to the right hand side here, a little shorter sprig of that. Now it's time to rinse that brush, picking up some of the emerald green from my palette real soon here to get in some final contrast right next to the right side of this flower with some long undulating wiggly strokes. And then because this right side is a little more dry, I can go right up next and get that crisp, clean contrast. And oh, that is so good. I love that. I love cutting in with a really dark, intense, or bright color. It's just like the wow, wow, joy moment in any of my paintings. Going over on the left-hand side, and those petals, those pink petals aren't as dry, but I actually like how the emerald is blending into the pink. And then a few press and lift, press and lift moments for some really, really loose greenery 
and I didn't rinse my brush. I went into that creamy pink and I actually really like that like pinky grayish greenish moment it created. A few more dabs of that creamy pink after rinsing my brush to kind of wrap up the, the filler moments of this little teeny tiny composition. And oh my gosh, friends, peony season eh, is such a wonderful time of the year. It is maybe second to dahlia season, but oh my gosh. Now I'm definitely feeling like it's time for some linear details, but guess what? I am not switching up my brush. I'm going to use the round brush for all those teeny tiny moments. You can really, depending on the quality of your round brush, you can really smooth out and get that tip to come to the most exquisite point. And if your round brush doesn't come to a nice point, it's just not that kind of round brush. So you might wanna to go to the liner if you don't have one like this. And I'm holding the brush almost perpendicular, loading it with the same ratio that I like for the liner brush, which is that 60% pigment, 40% water. It's not an exact science though. And then just using a light touch, I'm holding that brush further down on the handle and adding in those wispy details. I tend to get more control when I hold the brush perpendicular or almost perpendicular to the page, but you can still add the linear details at different angles. You're just going to get thicker, slightly thicker marks more easily at those angles. Now, I'm not trying to hide the fact that this is a fast and loose, definitely not realistic peony. But by adding these little linear moments, whether it's long, skinny lines over and over again, or little dots and dashes, you can start to create a more recognizable layering of the petals. And that's what I'm attempting to do here. But I'm really trying to make sure that I don't go overboard and start covering up some of those lovely explosive moments that I got in the early phases of laying down the color and the shapes. How are we feeling about my peony today, friends? Let me know in comments. Do you love it or were you hoping for a more realistic version? I know lately I've been pumping out some realistic-ish videos. I'm going to link my latest one below where I did a really cool composition with poppies. If you've missed it, you're going to want to set aside an hour, but it's a good one. Heading into the leaves with some linear details to wrap this up. I am pretty pleased with this peony. I find that the peonies with all of the layers of those tinier petals, I find them to be quite challenging to capture their essence. And unless I'm going more realistic where I'm doing a super detailed sketch first, I usually kind of default to this loosey goosey washi style. Now there are a bunch more leaf shapes that you need to master to really feel empowered on this journey. Head to this video next and friends, happy painting.